Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. In today's episode we're going to be dealing with two things. The parking brake, the rear pads on the S3, we need to change those because those are very thin. And of course to do that you need to deal with the electro-mechanical parking brake which is infamous because they could be a nightmare to deal with if you don't know what to do. So I'm going to show you the process using VCDS and um, you'll be able to then do your own brakes if you want to change them because they are really easy but you just got to do it for the procedure I'm going to show you and then of course I'm going to give you a bit of an update as to how the car the GTE is performing after it's had the remap so let's not waste any time let's crack on and let's check out the brakes okay let's start off by jacking this car up and getting those wheels off Okay, so here's the pads at the back. Now, from an initial look, it doesn't look too bad, actually. There is about three mil of pad on there, three or four mil. Now, this is what a new pad looks like. And there's the one that's on there. So you can see it's fairly worn. So now's a good time to do it before it gets any, any worse. So we're fitting these uh, Bembro uh, pads in here like we got on the front Because they are better than OEM You may wish to disagree with that But as a brand I like the performance I get and the front are doing well So the first thing we need to do because these are electro mechanical brakes We got to wind back the electric motor Before we push back the piston and then what we're going to do with this once the electro mechanical brake is winding or the pin pushes back where they're going to lever this forward to push the piston back in then what we'll do is we'll take it off give the brake caliper a clean up because as you can see it is rather full of dust and we want to make sure it's as clean as possible then we'll fit a new one simple as that 10 minute job in theory right so got a bonnet up and if you're wondering why whenever you do electro mechanical brakes on Audis and Volkswagens you need to ensure that you've got a battery charger on so that you don't run the battery flat because you're winding the pin in it's a real fraff and this is why I don't like doing these brakes but it's a necessary evil so our battery is being charged at the moment it is charged because I've driven this car today um, and it has no issues but of course this is going to condition the battery so with the Nico charger the Genius 5 it always starts low and then will build once it sort of understands what the battery voltage is I might be talking complete rubbish there but that's what I understand it does and that's the reason why it looks like it's low anyway we're going to close the bonnet we'll just leave it ajar and now we need to get my laptop to plug in so we can wind that pin in for the electromagnetic brake and it will do both sides right so we've got the car on the ignition is on so the first thing we need to do is put the parking brake up and then pull it down again once I press the brakes okay right okay so let's jump into VCS or VCDS rather and what we do is we go to ABS brakes and then we go into basic settings and then we go to start lining change mode okay now in some tutorials it'll tell you to go to part um section 53 this doesn't have se section 53 on the a3 av model okay so you basically use the parking brake mode which is what we're on now now i'm going to click on go and you should hear the piston wind in or the pin wind in it's 
So you can hear the pin winding in. Then when it finishes, we wait 30 seconds. And the reason why we have to wait 30 seconds is that if you do it beforehand, you could actually uh, cause an error in the system and you'll have to do a reset and it will log it as a fault and you won't be able to push the pin back in, so I believe. So it's important to wait the 30 seconds and I'm counting down now. And then once that is done, we can then start to disassemble the brakes. And the good thing about this is that it does both sides. Okay, so we've done that now. We're gonna click on okay. And we can then uh, close the controller. Because once you do that, you can then take the key out of the ignition and then go about carrying on doing the brakes. Okay, so now that we've got the piston or the, the uh, motor one, then we're gonna push back the caliper, push the um, piston in as much as we can. And that just makes it easier to, to get out. So we'll push it right back, right back into its seat, like that. And that will make fitting the new brakes so much easier. In the past, you normally see me get my motor and wind it in, but uh, this is the way we're doing it on this occasion. And then we'll remove this retaining clip, which I probably need to do with a screwdriver. I'm going to remove these pins and then we'll see what's happening with that. Okay, so looking at the fronts or the backs, they're not as bad as the fronts, but we were definitely, really, they were due a change. You can see that in comparison to that. I mean, so much more material, isn't there? Good, okay. So we're gonna clean up the carrier and the caliper itself, make it look a little bit more presentable, and then we'll, we'll put the new pads in. Okay, so I had to get my uh, piston out, my kit out, brake wind back kit to push the uh, piston back in. And I'm just cleaning the pins up. Here's one before, and this is what it will look like after. So just giving these a bit of a clean before they go back. I'm gonna grease these ends here so they don't get stuck in again. And then we'll put the brake pads back on, or the caliper rather. Okay, so once we've got the brake in, the pads, we just, actually we're not gonna do that yet. But when we get the other side in, we'll come in and press that brake pad just to make sure that the pistons are fully engaged and seated. The pistons, I keep saying pistons. The pads and the piston comes back out so it's touching the brake again. Right, let's do the other side now. Well, you, you've seen this side. The other side is a case of rinse, rinse, wash and repeat. So we'll do that and then we'll show you the end results. Right, second brake is now done. 
and everything is now being added back so let's go and sort out the caliper so once you get the brake pads in you need one couple of things that you need to do before you reset the um, the uh, mechanical brake right so we give the foot press the foot brake a press so we push the caliper back in or the pistons back in sorry about the uh, noise right that's now solid so that brake is now um, back to its normal level we'll just check the level under the bonnet yep brake fluid is fine so we can put the cap back on now right time now to put the brakes back on so what we do is we turn on the ignition I'm gonna turn the lights off because the headlights have come on and then we go back to VCDS okay so we're back on VCDS so we're just gonna go back out of that controller again so we're gonna go once again into ABS which is zero free yep okay and then we're gonna go into basic settings and now we are going to N lining change mode we we'll click go and we should hear the brakes go so let's just click go okay and that is it they're now finished so once we've done that we can come out of that click done then we're just going to check to make sure that there's no codes we've got a tire pressure warning we know that and the other one is going to be brake pad replacement mode yep so we can clear those actually we won't clear those because i need to do the tire pressure but that's fine okay brakes done relatively straightforward let's talk about the uh, gte so it's been about two weeks now since um i have had the gte um, back from regal autosports and um, it's been great it's been really great in fact now of course when we did the run we weren't able to get the electric uh, motor running we're going to come on to that in a second as to the reasons why but one of my main concerns was the um, actual racing line remap which I use the OEM one is supposed to adjust the electric motor and I was just wanted to confirm whether or not that was the case because that's what I was originally told when I um, actually was looking at this system to use so I made contact with um, Racing Line and I spoke to one of their technical managers so I sent an email to Racing Line and I was I had a reply from uh, Matthew Ellis who is the technical sales manager there at Racing Line and this is what he had to say essentially what he told me was that their remap does alter the power on the GTE and he also confirmed like I um, understood it to be that the GTE when it is running in GTE mode it reduces the electric motor to 50 brake horsepower now racing line their kit their OEM um, remap it does alter that and increases it so that in line with the increase in power on the uh, the petrol motor you also get an increase in power on the electric motor as well so the petrol engine which should, should see a 30 brake horsepower increase which is exactly what we did see and also there is, um, it didn't, we didn't talk the exact numbers, but obviously there's an increase in power on the electric motor. Now, racing line in their research, they can increase that further and some, um, some remapping software do actually increase that power. But by doing so, you are putting strain on the electric motor and the gear and etc. Although the gearbox is really strong, it's a strong gearbox. So it can handle the additional torque for the longevity of the, uh, the, the, the whole powertrain unit, uh, Racing Line do a modest upgrade. Now, how does it feel when you're driving? Well, it certainly does feel powerful. It's a noticeable increase in torque and also the electric, the um, petrol motor, the ICE, internal combustion engine, if you're wondering what ICE means, has a noticeable increase in, 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 in power as well. So when you're driving a car, it does feel a lot more powerful. And where that power comes in is straight from, um, from north. So from zero RPM, you get that big hot bolt. And then the car, when the petrol engine kicks in, it also kicks down the gear. So you get that in continuous uh, increase in power. That quickly drops off as you saw in the scale in my um, remap. 
Also, I'm gonna put it on screen now. Um, Regal uh, reached out to me and with an adjusted map. So essentially, they've been fine tuning their dyno and they gave me the, uh, another map reading. And as you can see, it's a lot different to the original one that we had, but the power increase remains the same. So we're seeing a consistent power increase there. So all in all, the performance of the kit has been great. It's been really satisfying. What I did notice in, when I compare the S3 and then the power band and the GTE, the GTE will leave the S3 on the lights. However, the S3 will catch up because the power in the S3 is consistent and increases, whereas the GTE quickly drops off. And that's understandable. You've got an electric motor and you've got a small combustion engine. The GTE was never designed to be a street rod or a hot rod or a, a, a a fast hatchback in, in, in the true sense of the term. But when it comes to just running the car around town, it is brilliant, the power is fantastic, and even up to about 60 mile an hour, it is strong. It is a strong pull, and you do notice the difference. I have noticed a difference. So, the conclusion of this conversation, would I recommend it? Absolutely because it's a good increase. If you want to go higher, there's other companies that do that, but it comes at a cost. And of course, there's going to be additional wear and tear on the engine. And this technology here is relatively new. The GTE has been around for a few years, but it's relatively new. So this modest upgrade is great enough and it basically fulfills out what I want. If you want more, you have to really ask yourself why you tune in your GTE to get more. Maybe you should get a Golf R if that's what you really want. Yeah, good, okay. So, in conclusion, it's been a great update. The S3 is now done. What's next on the channel? Well, we might have a little project. We've got a, that might be coming up very soon, as soon as maybe even next week. We'll see. If you are on Patreon, you will know sometime this week before anyone else does what if the new project is nah you know what there's a new project coming it's a small project i'm doing a favor for a friend and um we are got a, a, a little challenge that we're going to uh, bring forth to you it should be interesting hopefully good okay anyway enough waffle let's end this now by telling you don't forget to subscribe down here if you are a casual viewer and click on the bell notification um, so you're notified whenever we release a new video and give us a thumbs up on the video as well because that really helps um, I do have a midweek video coming up so um, in fact let me show you we are reviewing this product here car lock um, now if you see my video on the uh, fiasco with Bill and Ben and if you haven't you're being living on the rock but check the link at the end or check the link above you'll be able to see um, the reason why we're gonna test this against an Apple tag. So is this better than an Apple tag? I think it might be, but find out on Thursday. In the meantime, guys, have a great week and we'll see you on the next one.